everyone. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> All right. So today we are going to do a video on perspective. So when you think of perspective, what I want you to think of is like this and see what you see. When I do this, what I see is going to be a little bit different from what Jack sees because where I'm sitting is slightly different from where he's sitting. So perspective is what you see and it's going to be different based on who you are and where you are in a certain situation. If you think about the Bible, there are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and they all are four different perspectives on the life of Jesus. And even though a lot of them share some of the same stories about Jesus and his life, they all tell it from in a different way, and they focus on a different aspect of Jesus. So who you are and the situation you're in can really change the perspective of something. So for example, Luke, he was a doctor, physician, and so he really focused on a lot of the miracles that Jesus performed because they really could not be explained medically or by science because they were um, from God. So that was how Luke's interpretation was a little bit different. Um, Mark's interpretation was more on a lot of the actions of Jesus and a lot of the different things that Jesus did in his life. So they have two very different um, takes on Jesus. Jesus was the same person, but they saw him differently based on the different things that, th that he did. But what we are going to focus on today with perspective is viewpoint in terms of reading um, different books. So I'm sure that all of you are very familiar with The Three Little Pigs, because we've heard that story since we were very little, right? Even you know the story, right? So in The Three Little Pigs, it tells a story about three little pigs who built all of different houses, one of straw, one of sticks, and one of bricks. And then a big bad wolf came and he tried to blow their houses down and he blew them all down except the brick house. And then they cooked them in a pot and he didn't bother them again. But that was just kind of an overall story of what happened with them. And I'm going to read you a story from a different character's perspective on this same story. And this is called, you may have read it before, it's one of my favorites. It's called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. And this one is by A. Wolf. You know what? This is one of my favorites. Isn't it a good book? So this story is from the wolf's perspective. So based on what the wolf says, we actually might have a different thought process about what really happened with the three little pigs. So let's read. The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. And by the way, this is one of my favorite authors, John Sieska. He also wrote The Stinky Cheese Man, which happens to be another one of my favorite books. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do, but I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. So already, it's the wolf actually telling the story. It's not an outside narrator. It's the wolf telling the story. So we already know it's from his perspective. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault. Wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. <clears throat> this is the real story. <laughs> the real story? What does that cup of sugar do? <laughs> does it make them ill or make them bad? Shh, don't spoil it. <laughs> Way back in Once Upon a Time Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. There he is making his cake. Oh, out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. 
Now this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? <laughs> that is just silly. Yeah. Every possible. Preposterous? Mm -hmm. I mean, preposterous. <laughs> so, of course, the minute I knocked on, knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into somebody else's house, so I called, Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar from my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. Uh-oh. And I sneezed a great sneeze. Achoo! Whoops. <laughs> and you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. <laughs> he had been home the whole time. There he is. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. I was feeling a little bit better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar, so I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little kid's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf, you can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth. But I sneezed a great sneeze. Achoo! And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. <laughs> I could have liked this because it looks like a uh, dinner table setting. I just noticed that. Now you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I ate dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. That's not very nice. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't give me even one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. <coughs> wow. He is not kind. No, he's not. Like the two little pigs. Now, I'm usually a calm fellow. But when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down this pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all of that huff and puff and blow your house down, and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it.
the real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar. So I love this story because it's all from the perspective of the wolf. And in the first one, you don't, the reader doesn't really like the big bad wolf because he seems pretty mean. But in this one, you know, I, I feel sympathetic towards him and I feel like maybe he was wronged and he really didn't deserve that. So now, another book. This is one of my favorites. It's called Mirror Mirror. And there's also a Mirror Mirror 2 book. Um, and this book is really interesting because what it has on one side is a poem and the other side is a poem but it's called a reverso and what a reverso is it's the same words but in a different order so i'll read the first one that the author gives of how they told they came up with this a cat without a chair incomplete and then the other one is incomplete a chair without a cat so it's the same words but one of them goes up to down and then the other one actually takes the last word from the first one and then rewrites it that way. But why I love this book, Mirror Mirror, is that this author has done reversos um, to show perspective. So I'm going to read two different um, reverso poems from this book. And I want you to think whose perspective is the first poem from and whose perspective is the second poem from. And sometimes the pictures actually help too. So this one, if you're familiar, is about uh, Snow White. So the first one. <clears throat> Let me help you get some rest. Mother knows best. Listen to me, Snow White. Sleepy, dopey, happy. You've been working day and night. You look worn out. A long nap, a blanket, an apple to eat. What would you like? Time to get off your feet. Here's the second one. Time to get off your feet. What would you like? An apple to eat? A blanket? A long nap? You look worn out. You've been working day and night. Sleepy, dopey, happy, snow white. Listen to me. Mother knows best. Let me help you get some rest. So the first one is from Snow White's perspective and the second one is from the witch's perspective. I'll read another one to you as well. Some of these are easier to figure out than others. So this one's called Have Another Chocolate. So I'll read the first one. Fatten up, boy. Don't you like prime rib? Then your hostess, she will roast your she will roast you goose. Have another chocolate. Eat another piece of gingerbread. When you hold it out, your finger feels like a bone. Fatten up. Don't keep her waiting. Here's the second. Keep her waiting. Don't fatten up. A bone feels like your finger when you hold it out. Eat another piece of gingerbread. Have another chocolate. Goose. Then your hostess, she will roast you like prime rib. Don't you fatten up, boy. So the first one is from the witch's perspective. And the second one is written from Gretel's perspective. Like she's talking to Hansel and saying, be careful. And for the next one, I'm going to read it and show you the picture, but I'm also going to take a picture of this and I'm going to be posting it on um, Google Classroom. This will be an assignment. And what I want you to do for this assignment is, to t is for you to tell me which perspective is the first poem from and whose perspective is the second poem from. So it's called In the Hood. In my hood, skipping through the wood, carrying a basket, picking berries to eat, juicy and sweet, what a treat. But a girl mustn't dawdle, after all. Grandma's waiting. Here's a second. After all, Grandma's waiting, mustn't dawdle. But a girl, what a treat, juicy and sweet. Picking berries to eat, carrying a basket, skipping through the wood, in my hood. So this one is from two different perspectives and what I want you to do is to, after you look at the picture 
and reread the poems, I want you to tell me who the first poem, whose, pers whose perspective that one's from, and then whose perspective the second one is from. As an extra credit, you may rewrite your own fairy tale in a different character's perspective that has not been done before. So just like we did the true story of the three little pigs, you could do something like from the wolf's perspective from Little Red Riding Hood. I just was thinking about that from this. Um, or you could do any other character's perspective, like maybe um, one of the three bears from Goldilocks, one of their perspectives. So just think about that. That's totally extra credit. So your assignment is just to be telling me the two different viewpoints or perspectives that are in this poem that I will be posting. Thank you for joining me. Happy reading and happy writing.